Hey, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com, and uh, today I want to talk about and review the uh, Morantz NA6006 streamer. Um, problem is, I'm not probably the best person to review the streamer, and the reason for that is I'm actually new to streaming. Um, like a lot of people, uh, kind of a holdout to streaming. I was also sort of out of the audio uh, loop for a couple of years after I moved, so I wasn't really keeping up with it. So the problem for me to give useful advice to people watching this uh, on the streamers, I don't really have anything to compare it to. So I can't say, you know, I compared the, the Morans to my reference streamer or so on and so forth. I can only give you my, my, my sort of one of opinion of the streamer. Um, however, you may be like me in that you may be new to streaming or you are holding out or not streaming and are wondering whether you should stream. Uh, and that actually may be a more relevant conversation for you and then we can sort of talk about the Morantz <clears throat> and whether it, it fits you. So, like a lot of people, uh, I recall streaming when it came out and it was awful. Uh, and so I, like a lot of people who, you know, really value the quality of the audio versus just the convenience, because streaming originally was just about convenience. It was not about audio quality. The audio quality was just awful. So, like a lot of people, uh, I had sort of a bad uh, taste in my mouth about the concept of streaming. Uh, I thought that... Um, uh, I have to admit that I thought that basically it would always sound like compressed garbage and, you know, so forth. And yet I kept seeing on the, the boards that I frequent and the forums that I frequent, um, that's somebody trying to ping me on Facebook, um, people that I, you know, knew were audiophiles that really, improved, you know, uh, had nicer systems than I do. That, that's my basic reference system right now. Uh, who had nicer systems than I did that, you know, raved and raved about streaming. So I said, you know, I really need to look into this and see if my... You know, I'm just being uh, uh, stubborn uh, and looked into it. And um, to be perfectly honest with you, I actually really wanted to not like it. I was all set to not like streaming. It wasn't going to sound great. Uh, it was going to be compressed garbage and I was going to go rant and rave and I was wrong. All right. So getting to that, you know, when I look for, uh, when I look for brands that I know are going to be value brands for the money, that is, they tend to give you a lot for the money. Uh, you know, they may be mid-fi priced and give you very close to high-end sound. Morantz is always on my short list. Uh, uh, two units in there are Morantz. That's the uh, 606, and that's actually a universal SAC CD player. Uh, it's an older unit, but it, it still sounds great. It, it got uh, killer reviews uh, when it came out. That's, that's, almost, that's almost 20 years old, um, that CD player. So I've got two Morantz units, and Morantz is always on the short list when you're looking for value gear that is well engineered sounds good uh, for a, a value price and so I decided okay if I'm going to get into streaming uh, my price point was you know I wanted to be around a grand maybe a little under to get something I knew would be a, a well built engineered product but I you know if I didn't like it um, could I sell it or you know would I just end up using it for background music that type of thing so for me again price wise was around a grand maybe a little less um, two, maybe I'm just old-fashioned, uh, what have you. I really like gear to look like gear that fits in the rack. You know, again, I really have to applaud Morantz for not making uh, the streamer, you know, some little odd-shaped box that, to me at least visually, I just don't like that look. I, I, if it works for you, great. Uh, I tend to, you know, sort of, I want a piece of gear that sort of fits, has that standard size and shape that goes into my audio rack like so. Uh, and that again is something I really prefer, and, and I think that I think that was a smart direction for Morans to go. Uh, but again, you'll, you'll find that a lot of producers of streamers are making them in various odd shapes and sizes, and I just didn't really see that fitting very well into you know to my rack. Um, and let's be honest, you know we do care how things look. Anybody that says they only buy things for sound and don't care how it looks is lying. You know that, and I know it. Obviously, you don't only buy things for looks. Hopefully. But certainly, if you can find something that you like the way it sounds, and it's a brand you trust, and so forth, you know, you want to like, you want to like, like the way it looks. And I, I like the clean, industrial look of the Morantz. So, getting back to streaming. So, yeah, I was a holdout. If you're a holdout and you're not streaming, you should be streaming. Um, I, I'll straight up, it sounds fantastic. It is not the streaming that you knew from before. It's a completely different animal. And now that you've got a number of services that are... Uh, putting out uncompressed or very slightly compressed files, and that's another debate you can get into. Uh, I'm currently using the NA6006. Uh, uh, I think it is really a, uh, 
a sweet spot product. Uh, again, typical Morantz. I think they've really uh, outdone themselves for what you're paying for uh, the quality of the sound that you're getting, which which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, setup was good. Uh, I, you know, actually, the big complaint that people have is not the unit; it's the Heos app that runs it. That's where most people uh, will. If you go look on reviews and stuff online, sound-wise, I've never read a complaint yet. The main complaint is that Heos app. Um, I don't have a lot of trouble with it, honestly. I think they're probably you know improving it and updating it. Uh, not at least not enough to not want the product. Uh, it does occasionally freeze up. Doesn't happen that often. Um, I don't find it the most intuitive app. And again, this may be you know my age. You know, younger people are you know everything's an app to them. Uh, I, I can't say that I you know live on apps. Uh, so I will say it's not the, always the most intuitive app, and it is a little glitchy. But uh, it has not been so bad that I would not want to own this unit. So that's all I can say about that. Your mileage may differ if you have dealt with the Heos app. Um, I would say it's still worth having, and obviously I think they'll keep improving the app. It's already been updated at least once, so that's been the main complaint. Um, Sound-wise of this Morantz, uh, it's, it's warm. It's on the warmer side, leaning actually almost towards what I would say analog-like. Now, I think, I, I get the sense that actually might have been what they're shooting for. It's sort of almost an analog sound. Um, so it probably would pair best with... Uh, gear that is maybe a little on the, the more revealing, maybe a little more bright side. You might get a really nice balance there. Uh, pairing it with what stuff that is already sort of on the more laid back, analog, darker side might actually kind of push it into, you know, boring, flat um, type sound. Uh, and again, problem is I'm not the person, the best person to give you this review because I have not compared uh, other streamers. I did have uh, an Arillic, a uh, little $200 Arillic streamer that um, I'm using in a different system and that's a different video but I have not had the time to sit down and compare it to other ones so uh, I would say that if I had to classify it as a sound I would say it's a, a very um, analog type laid-back warm sound uh, I'm using um, Amazon HD uh, and I will tell you the combination of Amazon HD through the through the Morantz through my my associated gear which I will get into some other some other day and I've got some new gear coming in is awesome. I, I, I am really, I'm floored. Uh, honestly, there's some, there are some tracks, again, it all starts with the source material, of course. End of the day, it doesn't matter where it comes from, what you're playing, it all starts with the source. And the source material, if it's good and there's a lot of it, um, I've listened to things like Maxwell, uh, Peggy Lee. I know a lot of you are probably not even old enough to remember Peggy Lee, but uh, the recording quality on some of this. Uh, Cheryl Crow's most recent um, album, uh, Strings. Uh, it phenomenal. Sounds absolutely phenomenal. Now, anybody that's a holdout out there that is saying, or at least thinks, that, uh, you know, streaming can never sound as good as, as my CD player, my SAC player, does not understand how digital sources work. Digital doesn't care where it's coming from. Digital is digital. The, the issue, of course, is the source, the quality of where it's being sent, uh, how it's the pipe that's coming over, whether it's big enough, and what happens when it shows up on the other end, i.e. going through... Um, uh, digital to analog conversion and the how that's laid out uh, and so but on at least on paper and you'll find this if you ever like yourself stop being a holdout and try the streaming like I did um, digital is digital as far as as far as the units are concerned whereas it could be tra it could be transmitted from Mars uh, as far as what the quality of that signal can be and then it has to hit that DAC and then that DAC has to do its thing and uh, a lot of people may also make the mistake of thinking that the uh, the DAC alone, of course, is what makes the difference, and of course it's the key aspect of this, but uh, how the DAC is utilized and how it's engineered and put together with the rest of the unit has a lot to do with how it's going to sound. So, you know, they're not all created equal. Uh, so my advice is, sir, if you've, if you've been a holdout, I, I say get into get into streaming. This is the time. Um, the the Marantz NA606 might be a, a really good choice for somebody like yourself, like me, who wants to get into it, get into a quality unit, but not break the bank, but not go too cheap either. Um, and you like to look. Again, those three things for me, those sort of checked off my boxes to get into streaming. I'm very happy with it. Um, I might try another streamer in the future uh, and see, you know, start comparing. That's on my, that's on my list of things to do. So uh, hopefully, oh, another thing I'd like to say about the unit is that Morantz, you know, was obviously very serious about the engineering of this unit to really satisfy also audiophiles, people that are serious about their music. 
they allow you to turn off over almost everything inside the unit that may uh, produce sound, uh, such as the display, such as the analog uh, outputs, uh, such as the headphone jack. I mean, you can really go into this unit and selectively turn off just about every circuit in the unit that could create sound. Now, I listened to the unit for a good month before changing everything, anything, and then I followed their instructions and went in and turned off all those little circuits that uh, could uh, alter the sound. And I did think there was an improvement. Um, I did. It's subtle, and I will be honest, as a scientist, uh, could I pass a, a legit AB, uh, blinded AB test? I don't know. But I did feel like uh, there was a slight but obvious improvement in sound by doing that. And even if there's not, all I will say is credit where credit is due to Morantz for obviously really going the extra mile to uh, uh, make this a serious unit for audiophiles that want to minimize any source of noise that they can. So, having said that, I hope this is useful information to you. And uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, hit the likes, you know, the usual advice. And uh, see you all on the Brinkzone.